Hey guys, thank you so much for taking time to spend time with Pastor Mike and myself. We are elated to be doing this. We are excited about the Super Bowl, excited about you. So no matter where you're at, whether you're at somebody's house or your own house or whatever your situation is, hey, thanks for taking a moment to share this halftime devotion with us. And uh, we're glad you're a part of this and we're glad to be a part of this. You know, Matt, we're talking about uh, a really phenomenal Super Bowl because of the age difference between Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady. <laughs> you know, Brady, he's 43 years old. Mahomes is 25. And uh, obviously, Tom Brady's the greatest quarterback of all time. Can't you know, argue just, with it. Yeah, I'll give you some of the stats here. Uh, most games won by a quarterback. Most games played by a quarterback. Most games started by a quarterback. Most games played by any skilled position player. Uh, most combined uh, passing yards, 91,000 plus. Most combined touchdown passes, game winning drives, fourth quarter comebacks. He holds them all, and um, you know the most conference uh, championships. He's appeared in 14. The second player who's even close is Joe Montana at seven, and Joe Montana is a Hall of Fame quarterback. Yeah. Played at Notre Dame, and uh, obviously is great. But you know Brady has just surpassed everyone. And now, you know, it's kind of the, the young guy, the old guy, kind of like you and I sitting up here, <laughs> the young guy, the old guy. But Mahomes, 25 years old, and uh, as you said, he's been in the, the league uh, and done phenomenal. So, you know, just give a little yeah, bit so, on him. So, I was, you know, looking up stats, it's so funny because Brady's page just goes and goes and goes, and, and you just have to add categories to things that he – he was a part of, but one thing that I did notice is both these guys' first year wasn't all that great. Yeah. I mean, they all had to pay the piper, yeah. um, but after that, it's what they did with that opportunity. Of course, we see like Mahomes has a sixty cents, a sixty-six percent passing rate and fourteen thousand yards plus and a hundred and fourteen touchdowns. So really, he's in in a similar position that Brady was coming out of the league. But there's one thing, of course, that Brady has that Patrick just doesn't have yet, and it's that experience. My goodness, of all the games and the ups and the downs. And then, of course, you look back over their seasons, and some were great and some were not as great. And, you know, Patrick only has four of those to mess around with. Brady has 20 years. So, <laughs> yeah, well, and here's an interesting, you know, fact, too. When Tom Brady went to Michigan to play college football, it was the same year Patrick Mahomes was born. <laughs> <laughs> so that gives you a little perspective there. Yeah. And, and so, you know, he played at Texas Tech. And, you know, Mahomes holds the record of uh, passing yards and total offense in the NCAA. And also, uh, when he went to the NFL Combine, uh, they said he threw the fastest pass, 60 miles an hour, Lord. than any other uh, Combine player. There was a couple of them that was right at 60. But so not only this guy can scramble, but this guy can throw a rocket at yes. 60 miles an hour. How would you like to be the receiver, you know, on the other end of that? No desire. No <laughs> desire. Well, I, you'd have to pay me millions, but <laughs> yeah. but I don't know if I could hang in there. But just, you know, as we go down the list here, we see even I, I picked up some um, stats kind of on their careers up to this game. And, like, Brady um, has 263 uh, passing yards, and Mahomes had 307. Touchdown passes, Brady averages right under two, and – uh, Mahomes is like two and a half, and then uh, wins per season right at 12. And then passer ratings, you know, Mahomes is just a little bit higher than Brady. And and you see this young kid, man, that is talented. He can scramble. He's got some strengths that, that Brady doesn't. Yeah. But, man, whenever they get up underneath center, you know that they're both focused. But I would still have to say that 16 more years of experience of – just reading defenses and knowing who's lined up where. And, and, and then if you add all the guys that they're going against, he had played against these guys before. So, you know, that experience is just such a vital pro, uh, a vital uh, uh, part of the equation here. But then you have Mahomes' enthusiasm and just desire to prove that he wants to be up there with the rest of them. And, of course, his stats are, are showing that he's, he's going that direction. But it's one thing on Brady's side to be with the greats like Mon Montana. It's another thing to be twice as good as they are <laughs> and yeah. have the stats to prove it. I mean, so it's, it's, it's going to be great. Uh, what's going on here? Well, you, you know, one of the things that you and I talked about earlier this week was, um, you know, the generational um, thing that is important not only in football but life. Um, you know, this is something we try to do here at Ray of Hope. Yes. We need to reach everybody, you know, whether 
people are older or younger, uh, whether they're kids or people who are 90, everybody needs the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so we know that uh, marriages, businesses, people individually with their uh, not only their physical health to, to try to do well, but their mental health and certainly their spiritual health. And, and I brought a verse here. This is Exodus 17, verse 11. And let me just preface it, kind of give it a little context. This is when Moses and Israel are trying to get to the promised land. And, you know, they're wandering for 40 years. One of the, the big obstacles they faced was the Amalekites, which was a, uh, a group of people that was in that land. And so they're not letting Israel pass. There, there is a conflict there. And so in the conflict, Joshua and the young warriors, they're down in the valley. They're on the battlefield, and they're battling the Amalekites. Well, for some reason, and I can't tell you why, it's just a God thing, when Moses is on the hill overlooking the battle, and as long as he has his hands up, Joshua and the guys are winning. Whenever he gets tired and the hands go down, they begin to lose. So th this is what the verse says, verse 11. So it came about when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed, and when he let his hand down, Amalek, or the Amalekites, prevailed. And so we know the story that... Uh, Two guys, Aaron and Hur, came alongside of uh, Moses and lifted his hands up because sh surely, you know, they're getting tired because the guy, you know, is uh, well over 80 years old and he's getting close to 120. Yes. So now he's tired and, and he has to have help. So I think the importance of, of generations that, you know, we need the young guys on the battlefield, maybe we need the old guys on the hill or, or whatever <laughs> we say. And, and when you're on the hill doesn't mean you're over the hill. Yeah. So we, we want to be on the hill, not over it. Because we're useful no matter what age that we are. And, and that's a great thing to, to understand, and, and it's something we have to look at. I think that's a very important part, and I think as a young person, what we don't want to do is push anybody down the hill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These two guys, they were, they were, they were holding up Aaron, uh, uh, Moses' hands, and as young people, that's what we want to do. I mean, we have uh, we had talked before about this, and one of the great perspectives of these two young guys looking down at the battlefield is that they had the ability to see how Moses did things. Um, what he was thinking and conversations and they had a perspective that maybe they wouldn't have had if they hadn't been willing to help and say hey it's not my ideal it's not your ideal let's do this together and let's go up there and hold up the hands and get a full perspective of how leadership works on the battlefield and off the battlefield and what's going on and uh, it doesn't matter where you're at on the hill it's just it's better when we're all together on the hill and uh, we preached a sermon series on that called better together yeah, and right. certainly Man, multi-generations, we're better, like peanut butter and jelly, just better together. That's how it has to be. Well, and I think, too, th there's two battles. There's the physical battle that uh, Josh was engaged in, and then we could look at Moses, Aaron, and her, the older guys. Uh, there's a spiritual battle that maybe they're waging in the prayer, the worship, the yes. hands up, uh, that posture. And I think in the realm that we all live in, obviously we have physical struggles, you know, in our um, – our world that we live in marriage finances jobs but behind that there's a spiritual reality that we have to face that affects the physical reality yes. and so you know we have these stories here and we do have the tendency to become fatigued stressed uh, maybe depressed uh, feeling over you know overcome in so many areas and one of the things that's important here too Matt is that you have to be willing to get help. Yes. So this is not just a one-person deal. This is, like you said, better together. So when someone is drooping <laughs> and the <laughs> hands are going down, goodness gracious, let's come beside them and say, how can I help you? How can I pray for you? Can I encourage you? Can I lift up your hands? Because tomorrow you may be lifting up my hands because mm -hmm. life has a way of not giving anybody a pass. So, you know, we're all in this battle together, and it's uh, – it, it's a tough it's a tough world sometimes so you know we need that instruction that that camaraderie that togetherness that you talked about absolutely because we're all going to need it and we have to be willing to embrace and support one another in the difficult times uh, that we're in which is a team absolutely and it it's it's also about that so much of that perspective issue too where 
you get in and you see that people who are experienced that are mature, a spiritually mature people or our elders, um, as even as even Peter talked about, um, they have a unique way of hearing from the Spirit of God, and and they've been there and done that, and they know um, you know how God will speak to them maybe, or how God will direct them, or know cues on that. Where sometimes as as youngsters we don't necessarily know all we need to know. Um, sometimes it's because that situation just overwhelms you. I mean, all that Moses had been through. Um, you don't want to say that this was just another battle, but he'd been on the battlefield before. I mean, he'd been at the Red Sea. He'd been before Pharaoh, and not that uh, Aaron and her hadn't been there before, but probably not to this uh, maybe exposure level, if you will. Right. And, and they needed um, uh, somebody who like Moses who would come in there and say, listen, we've been here before. God supplied. He'll supply again. We've got to listen to him and, and do what he says. But it, but it took the cooperation from everybody. It wasn't just Moses said, okay, you sit back and watch this while I do this he said no as i hear god we're going to do it together and we're going to be able to gain victory together and that's that's just so important that it's we work together and victory is ours not just one and obviously it's the lord's but we know that because we all serve the lord that it's we get a part of it too well and everybody's needed you <clears throat> you take about the game the super bowl game that uh, is going on um you know whether it's Mahomes or whether it's Brady and they're dropping back to pass there's a whole line there that's defending them yes I mean these guys are stopping you know the the opposition from coming in and uh, as, as believers you know we have a lot of opposition <laughs> and sometimes we have to run interference for one another you know we there's people that we prayed for you know today that's going into surgeries of people who are in the hospital and in some way, by us lifting them up in prayer and, uh, you know, coming alongside of them and holding their hands up spiritually, yes. we're running interference for them. And we all need that. I need it. You need it. It makes no difference who we are. And so, you know, this is not just a uh, one-person show. This is the body of Christ. Yes. And there's many members, one body, but many members. And just like teamwork and one another in that team can make the other look good or look bad. Yes. <laughs> so we want to do our best to make everyone look as well as we can by supplying what they need. And that's very, very yeah. important. Well, and I think that's such a good point, Pastor, that, you know, you take these two quarterbacks, and, of course, they have their own stats, and they're legit in their own um, in their own ways and everything. But, man, they have a really great knack of making their team look great. One of the things we were talking about, is it New England or is it Tom Brady? Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> it looks like Tom Brady has a lot to say about it this. Does. But whenever we rise to the occasion, no matter our age, we see that with Mahomes being the younger and Brady being the elder, it doesn't matter when we rise to our full potential we bring the team with us yeah. it's not just Patrick or not just Tom playing in the Super Bowl it's the Chiefs and the Buccaneers right. as a team and when you look out on that field the whole team you see different skill positions you see um, the guys who are big and tough and strong and all of them are but you know the big bulky linemen and then linebackers that want to eat people for lunch man you know and you see the different strengths and the different weaknesses out there and but it all comes together as a team and uh, whenever we as young or old will rise to the occasion and say I'm going to do the very best that I can not only to perform but to be skilled and oh, the amount of preparation and practice that these guys oh, yeah. have we have we have no ideal on just the demand of their schedule but whenever we pursue that with excellence then as a team we get to achieve victory and that's that's exciting stuff yeah and when the team a team achieves uh, achieves victory everybody wins you know uh, if you watch uh, at the end of the game whoever wins you know everybody wants to hold up the championship <laughs> trophy and they're kissing it and they're <laughs> handing it around because it's a team we all we all win and certainly, you know, as believers, uh, we've already won through Jesus Christ. Amen. But you still have to be on the battlefield. You can't, you know, say, I'm going to skip that part because we're in this world and we're going to do what we can do. But we cannot do what Jesus has done, and that's to secure, you know, our salvation as we accept him by faith and uh, believe in him. So we're living this out every day. But uh, it doesn't mean that it's easy, and as Matt said, there's a lot of preparation. There's a lot of things in the Word we need to get into us. There's prayer. Yes. There's coming together, you know, as believers and brothers and sisters in Christ. And to me, that's exciting because um, it's just 
feeling that you're part of something that's much bigger than yourself. And that's, that's, that's a very exciting thing about this is that whether you're young or whether you're older or whether you have this skill or that skill or wh whatever your strength or your weakness is, God wants to use us because we know we have one adversary. And it's an honor that he's chosen us to be on the same team as Team Jesus and say that we know that we are going against the devil and the things of that, and we want to see our families grow stronger. We want to see the church grow stronger, our communities grow stronger in Jesus Christ. And it's just an honor that you no, know, we all bring different things to the table, but the one thing that we all share in common is that he chose us. Right. And that's great. Yeah. <laughs> that is very exciting and very fulfilling. You know, we've talked about this before because, you know, we believe that we're in the last days and, you know, we're looking for the coming of Jesus Christ. And not original to me, but someone said, if you're in the fourth quarter and you're trying to win the game, you want your best team, your best players on the field. And so if we're in the last days, then you think about this. The Lord has you on the field. Yeah. And so he has confidence in you, and he has you in a strategic position that you can change the world around you and uh, do something very special, like I said, bigger than yourself. So that's something we can all do. And that's something we should be doing. So, you know, if, if you're watching and you're not a part of a church or a fellowship, we'd love to have you here. And uh, if you are here, let's continue to work together to see great things happen. Oh, yeah. Let's continue to hoist the trophy together. Yeah. <laughs> of course, our trophy is our salvation through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We know his word that's alive in our heart. And we would love to see you here if you don't go anywhere. If you do go somewhere, continue to stay faithful and honor God. And uh, we know that God will bless you. But we'd love to see you here and be a part of what we're doing. We love you guys. We hope you really enjoy the rest of the Super Bowl. And we cannot wait to see you guys. God bless.